Is chalk paint over? This DIY paint took the world by storm about 10 years ago and everybody was using it. But now I've seen some new paints come on the market. And so I wanna know, is chalk paints rain over? I'm gonna be answering that question today. If you are new here, hi, my name is Christina Mascari and I have been painting furniture on YouTube since 2014. So it has been 10 years since I was introduced to chalk paint. It was this miracle paint that hit the market made really famous by Annie Sloan, where you could just clean a piece of furniture, throw some paint on it, distress it, add a top coat or a wax, and you had a beautiful farmhouse or French country looking piece of furniture. I have used it on dozens of makeovers and it wasn't if it wasn't for chalk paint, I would not have a YouTube channel. I would not have an Instagram. I would not have a career or a job. So I'm so grateful to chalk paint, but a lot has happened over the past 10 years and there are new paints coming on the market that I think have become more popular in furniture painting. If you're a furniture painter or a DIYer, I would love to know your thoughts on this question is chalk paint over leave them down in those comments the reason I started using chalk paint was because of the ease of it I painted almost everything in my home back in 2014 I had really dark furniture or I had things that were handed down from my family or I had things that I was buying from Goodwill and I was putting white or gray paint on them distressing them putting clear wax on them to seal them and dark wax on to give them a more aged look that French country look that farmhouse look that was so popular back then and the reason chalk paint was so popular is because it was so easy to use all i had to do was clean my dressers off with soap and water and I could paint right on top of them without using primer. And yes, it worked, um, it held up. And the thing that I loved about distressing so much is that you really couldn't mess up furniture. If you distress it too far, you just add a little bit more paint. Uh, the pieces that I was recreating, the dressers that I was painting were really damaged. They were really old. They were really beat up. So adding that distressing to them was just very easy to just paint and distress. And it looked very old and lived in. And that was the look. And I think the industry as itself has grown a lot. Back in the day, everybody was using Annie Sloan chalk paint and you had to drive to your local store to find it. I used to drive 45 minutes or an hour just to go get my Annie Sloan chalk paint and waxes and everything. You couldn't get a chalk paint, furniture paint in the hardware store. Now there are so many brands. There's so many independent brands. The bigger brands like Rust-Oleum has their own version that's in the hardware store. Uh, Valspar has had a version in the hardware store. It is a very accessible. There are lots of paints available on Amazon as well. Over the years, you have seen so many content creators come on the scene. There's so many people on YouTube here refinishing furniture. There's so many people on Instagram and TikTok refinishing furniture and you're getting to see it in real time when I started painting there were like some blogs out about it but you couldn't really get a lot of information of like how are people flipping furniture what are they using what are the techniques that you're using so I think with this big explosion of all these content creators flipping furniture whether it's just to create content or for themselves or as a side hustle we just have this huge wealth of knowledge to see how people are doing things differently and also times have changed and styles have changed and farmhouse has definitely moved through that huge breakout trend that it has. I don't think farmhouse is dead. I don't even really think chalk paint is dead. It's just not as popular as it used to be. Those styles aren't as popular. We've moved more into wanting to see that sleek modern look that people actually want to see their furniture look like store-bought furniture. And back in the day, that was like, you never talked about that. You said sprayed dipped furniture looks like factory and you want it to be hand painted and you want it to be distressed. And so I think that mindset has just shift shifted, but there's still space for people who love farmhouse for people who love French country. Uh, just because something's not on trend and not popular anymore doesn't mean that you can't do it anymore. For me personally, my style started changing in my house. I noticed I wanted to switch out that distressed look in my house. I wanted a more clean, modern look. I really started falling in love with having dark blacks in my home. 
and rich greens and even navies. So I kind of shifted away from that white, light gray that I used to really love and that distressed look. And so I started playing with new techniques and new paints started coming on the scene that were different than chalk paint. They were a little bit um, more leaning towards that smooth, durable finish. And so I don't know if you've noticed, but over the past two years, I have really started spraying my furniture a lot. And I think we're seeing a lot of creators do that. And back in the day, we would have never thought of picking up a paint sprayer. That sounds so um, just out of my league. I'll never be able to figure out how to work a sprayer. And that's how I felt the first time picking it up. But now if you watch my channel, I'm spraying almost every piece of furniture that I'm doing because it's so, it has become easy for me now that I've learned how to use the sprayer. And the finish you get is just so beautiful if you're going for that smooth modern finish. And so with that, with the popularity of that look, we've seen these new paints come on the market that are considered an all-in-one paint that have that built in top coat capability, which is so helpful and makes things a lot easier. I think why chalk paint has gone down in popularity too is because it always has to be sealed. You cannot leave it raw. It will not hold up well. And with these new paints that are coming on the market, they have a built-in top coat. Um, it's always a good idea to throw some extra top coat on there if it is a really high traffic piece. But I have used some of these um, all-in-one paints over the past years that are just super impressive to me. And I have them in my home without a top coat on them. And I can attest that they hold up. You guys have seen me do a number of makeovers with silk all-in-one paint. I have lots of those pieces in my house that's still holding up. The one that I can attest to the most is in my daughter's room and it does have some nicks and chips in it because it's in a kid's room, but I am shocked. I've had that for three or four years and that has held up so well in her room and that I just painted on with a paintbrush and I didn't put any primer underneath. I didn't use any top coat on top and it held up. So if you're just a regular DIYer, you're like, Christina, I'm not trying to sell this. I just want this to look better. I think these all-in-one paints are a really good option for you. When I'm using silk all-in-one, I always clean really well and scuff sand. Sometimes I prime underneath this one and sometimes I don't. It just depends on if I think the furniture is gonna bleed or not, or if I did a lot of repairs and had a lot of wood filler in there. It's usually a case by case basis, but I have tons of projects using silk paint. So I will link a bunch of examples for you guys down in the description box if you wanna check out any of those tutorials. Another all-in-one paint I really loved working with was Melange One. Again, I just sprayed this one and did not brush it, so I can't speak to how it brushes on but the spraying was beautiful. It leveled out beautiful and it cured to a really hard, durable finish. Another all-in-one paint that I've really enjoyed using is Wise Owl One Hour Enamel. I have brushed this on and sprayed it and I do enjoy spraying it a lot more, um, but it dries so nice. It levels out beautifully and it gives you this nice, hard, durable finish. I do always prime underneath that one. That company recommends that you do that. It's just gonna help with your adhesion. Another paint that I really enjoyed trying out this past year on furniture was a interior exterior door and trim paint. Now the one I used was an acrylic urethane enamel and I really loved the way that dried. It looked like a factory finish. So if you're going for that slick, smooth factory finish, I really liked that one. I did have to prime underneath this. I don't think this would stick very well to furniture that has a coating on it if you don't put a primer underneath it. Again, because of the way this one is formulated, it's sprayed really beautifully and leveled out beautifully. I know a lot of people who have hand brushed this and who have used a roller on it. And I think you can get similar results, but I haven't tried it out yet. And another all-in-one paint that I recommend a lot to beginners that are just trying to flip something for their home and not necessarily sell or make this into a business is Beyond Paint. It is so easy to use. All you have to do is clean your furniture with Simple Green and then you roll it on with a roller and you use a chip brush to kind of stipple in hard to reach areas and then you roll everything out smooth with the roller. Something that people don't like about this is that it does have a little bit of texture to it. Definitely when you put it on, it is super thick 
and it looks really orange peely, but as it levels out, it flattens out, but it still will have some texture to it. But that's to help hide some imperfections. It's how it's formulated. But I have Beyond Paint in my house in a lot of spaces. And as long as you clean really well, this stuff bonds, primes, and seals all in one step. It is the easiest thing for someone who has no experience to do. It is a little bit pricey. I understand when people tell me this is such expensive paint but when you think about all the steps that you get to take out along the way it's definitely a recommendation for your first flip for something that you're doing in your home and i know a lot of people that have used beyond paint on cabinets in rvs um, and they have been really happy with the process of refinishing cabinets or vanities in their bathroom so do i think chalk paint is over no i don't think chalk paint is over i definitely reach for it a lot less than I used to, but that's okay. Like we evolve and grow as people. And I know there's tons of artists, furniture artists, furniture refinishers that still use chalk paint. They do beautiful things where they blend with it. There's a lot of people that still distress. So it's okay to still distressed. I will always be pretty distressed, even though I don't have any distressed furniture in my home anymore. I just love how the industry has grown. I love how there's so many paint companies now. There's so many places you can purchase paint, whether it's on Amazon, or at the hardware store, or go to one of these individual shop sellers, or go to a website somewhere. You have so many options. New technology is always coming out. So I love having choices, because back in the day, I don't feel like I had a lot of choices. I'll link all the paints that I talked about today down in the description box. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What kind of style of painting do you enjoy doing today? How has your style changed over time? And what paints are you loving? If you enjoyed today's video and you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscriber button before you leave. Give me a like, give me a comment. We're going old school YouTube today. Thank you guys for being here and I will see you in my next video.